What if the real drivers of Alzheimer's have been hiding in plain sight while you've been told the answer is simply clearing plaques? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today you'll hear why chasing amyloid plaques has kept Alzheimer's incurable, how distinct subtypes change everything about treatment, and what forgotten strategies, especially those restoring circulation and cellular resilience, have shown in studies and real cases. I'm Alara Skye. We'll keep this direct. You'll learn the key subtypes of Alzheimer's, why impaired brain blood flow and drainage can set the disease in motion, how sleep fits the puzzle, and why a decades-old compound, DMSO, appears to revive stalled neurons and improve cognition in animals and humans. Billions have funded amyloid-targeted drugs, yet benefits remain marginal at best. The newest monoclonal antibodies may slightly slow decline while triggering serious adverse events including brain bleeding and swelling in over a quarter of recipients. Meanwhile, the societal cost is enormous, hundreds of billions of dollars each year. Yet progress stays stuck because a symptom has been treated as the cause. Dale Bredesen reframed the problem. Amyloid acts as a protective response to brain stressors. Eliminating it without addressing those stressors misses the mark. Your brain constantly balances growth and pruning. Alzheimer's emerges when signals that sustain neurons fall behind the signals that dismantle them. Crucially, there isn't one Alzheimer's. There are multiple subtypes, and individualized protocols have produced improvements in trials and case series when treatments are matched to the driver. Let's outline the subtypes. Type 1 is inflammatory, often tied to metabolic or infectious triggers that push your brain into defensive downsizing. Type 1.5 is glycotoxic where insulin resistance and high blood sugar generate advanced glycation end products and promote amyloid by competing for insulin-degrading pathways. Type 2 is atrophic, driven by missing trophic support. Nutrients, hormones, and other factors your neurons need, often compounded by poor delivery to brain tissue. Type 3 is toxic, linked to biotoxins, infections, heavy metals, and industrial chemicals. It often appears earlier and with executive dysfunction or sensory changes rather than classic memory loss. Type 4 is vascular, where chronically reduced cerebral blood flow erodes processing speed and attention. Type 5 is traumatic, the long arc from severe head injuries or repeated concussions. Many dementias are misdiagnosed as Alzheimer's, and medications themselves can be problematic. Certain antihypertensives that lower perfusion, statins, acid reflux drugs that hinder nutrient absorption, antidepressants, antipsychotics, benzodiazepines, sedating antihistamines, and anticholinergics all raise concerns for cognition in this context. Impaired fluid dynamics, blood in, and lymphatic slash venous drainage out often initiate the degenerative cascade. When the blood's zeta potential drops, cells and proteins clump, microcirculation falters, and misfolded proteins aggregate more readily. Clinicians focusing on restoring healthy circulation repeatedly report cognitive gains, aligning with the idea that fixing the pipes changes the disease trajectory. You've likely never heard this. China developed a low-cost surgery to enhance lymphatic clearance from the brain, and an American procedure aims to improve venous outflow from the head. Beyond procedures, a variety of circulation-enhancing approaches have been observed to improve cognitive decline, reinforcing the centrality of getting nutrients in and wastes out. Clearance depends on the glymphatic system, temporary lymph-like channels formed during deep sleep that flush debris along blood vessels. Traumatic brain injuries impair this drainage. Inadequate glymphatic flow is linked to dementia and is required to move amyloid out. When sleep quality drops, the risks climb sharply. Look at the sleep data. Disrupted sleep has been associated with dementia increases ranging from roughly a quarter to more than doubling, with mild cognitive impairment also rising. Sleep loss accelerates amyloid accumulation and worsens cognition, while the disease proteins themselves disrupt restorative sleep and even awareness that sleep is impaired. Sleeping pills are not a fix. 
they block restorative sleep, correlate with two to five-fold higher mortality, and multiple studies associate their use with substantially higher dementia risk. Neuroplasticity adds another layer. Your brain constantly rewires. Habits that underuse key circuits invite pruning, while active engagement builds healthy momentum. At the molecular level, amyloid precursor protein can split into two parts that support function or four parts that drive degeneration. Once the four-part path dominates, it reinforces itself. The goal is to reestablish momentum toward the protective split and restore the signals neurons need to survive. Now consider the cell danger response. When stressed, cells downshift. Mitochondrial respiration and protein synthesis fall to ride out the threat. With age and chronic stressors, that freeze can persist. The integrated stress response, ISR, further suppresses protein synthesis. Inhibiting this pathway in research settings has restored structure and function in brain cells and improved memory deficits. In short, you want to help cells exit the freeze and resume normal work. Here DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide, re-enters the conversation. It improves microcirculation, shields cells from lethal stress, and appears to revive neurons trapped in that defensive state. Animal models show DMSO preventing or reversing memory loss after reduced cerebral blood flow or toxin-induced injury, mitigating Parkinson-like damage and countering amyloid-related pathology. Reports also span prion models, enhanced cellular waste handling, and broad anti-amyloid effects. Human data, while older and underpublicized, are notable. In a small series of people with probable Alzheimer's, three months of DMSO correlated with better memory, communication, and orientation. Larger cohorts of elderly adults with organic brain disease, post-stroke changes, atherosclerosis, Parkinson's, head injuries, showed improved function, mood, mobility, and speech with courses of DMSO. These observations match countless field reports of sharper cognition and better neurological recovery when circulation and cellular unfreezing are addressed together. So, what can you do with this today? Start by mapping your likely drivers. If you see signs of insulin resistance, recognize that it promotes amyloid. Address that pattern as you and your clinician determine. If your sleep is fragmented, prioritize restoring deep sleep rather than masking it. Avoid sleeping pills that blunt the brain's nightly cleanse. Review medications with your prescriber for cerebral perfusion and anticholinergic burden. Seek ways to improve circulation and drainage. What gets in and what gets out of your brain matters. And know that individualized protocols modeled on Bredesen's approach have shown the brain's trajectory can shift from decline to regrowth when the root stressors are removed and supportive signals return. Remember, even coconut oil, MCTS, have outperformed high-priced plaque-targeting drugs in impact, yet remain largely unknown. Your practical challenge. Over the next seven days, track two pillars, sleep and circulation. First, set a consistent sleep window and remove sedatives that flatten deep sleep if you and your clinician agree. Note, morning clarity and daytime recall. Second. Adopt one concrete circulation supporting step that fits your situation and keep a brief daily log of focus, word finding, and orientation. If insulin resistance is on your radar, add a fasting insulin fasting glucose check and note any post meal fog. At week's end, review the log with someone you trust and decide your next targeted step, including discussing individualized protocols or DMSO with a qualified clinician if it matches your profile. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.